So we've got 500 milliwatts out the back of the radio going into the antenna. I know what you're thinking. You're going to be lucky to get out of your village, Keith. Well, let's see. Welcome to the Ham Radio Junkie with me, Keith. If you visit your local ham store, you'll see that there are a few multi-mode HF radios that cater for the portable market. And I own one of these. It's the Yaesu FT817ND, and I've had it some time now. And during the time that I've owned it, I've had the opportunity to use it both mobile, portable, and in my home. I have to say, for a multi-mode HF, VHF and UHF radio, it's incredibly compact and offers the user some great features. However, possibly the biggest downside of the radio is that it only operates between 500 milliwatts and 5 watts, and that can be quite frustrating. So why do I say it could be quite frustrating? Well, if you're new to the hobby of ham radio, you'll buy this radio or another low-powered HF, get it home, plug it into your antenna, and start to hear stations from all over the globe. And that's great. However, when you try to get back to them, you may struggle against stations running considerable power. And that's where the frustration comes in. So what can you realistically do with a low-powered HF radio? And that's a great question. The answer is it depends. It depends firstly on your station, things like antenna. It depends on the atmospheric conditions. And it also depends on the other station you're trying to work. It may be that they've got a fantastic receiver set up and they'll drag you out of the noise. But just to see, I decided to run 500 milliwatts, yes, half a watt on HF to see how far I could go. So the setup I'm using is quite simple. It's my FT817 running half a watt into a vertical antenna that's at ground level in my back garden. I decided to send my signal using Morse or CW and that way I could utilise the reverse beacon network and I'll show you that as we go along. OK, so let's start sending CQ. As you can see, the radio set up, it's on low power and we're transmitting at around about 14 to 15 words per minute on 40 metres. And to send the CW, I decided to pull my old trusty CW key out rather than use my iambic paddle key. Yep, I know it's dusty, that's because it doesn't get a lot of use. So I said earlier on that one of the reasons I wanted to send in Morse code was that I could use the reverse beacon network. And this is a system where stations actively listen on various bands and report what stations they can hear, when they can hear them and how well they can hear them. And this is what the opening screen looks like. From the welcome page of the website, users can click on DX spots and then select the frequency range and also the mode to see if they've been spotted by one of the reverse beacon network stations. And as you can see on this page, here are a number of stations on the left hand side that have spotted stations with the flags next to them. It also gives the frequency and what mode they were operating on along with the time and also their signal strength in dB. So the first thing I decided to try was transmitting at 5 watts and then 500 milliwatts to see if there was much difference. The station at the bottom received me at 11 dB when I was operating with 5 watts. They also heard me at 5 dB when I was running 500 milliwatts. This is at the same time of the day with the station exactly the same except the power being changed. And for information, the station that heard me was in Estonia, which is a distance of 1,752 kilometres or 1,089 miles. After a few hours, I decided to call CQ again using Morse and again on 40 metres. 
and this time after about 10 minutes this was the result that I got. As you can see there's a number of stations here that I can hear mainly in Europe which is what we'd expect given the limited power of 500 milliwatts. Here you can see that I've highlighted a station that's in Sweden near the town of Stockholm. This is a distance of 1,433 kilometers or 890 miles. But you'll also note that they've heard me on three occasions as I've changed frequency. And at the same time, the decibel reading has changed. In other words, the signal strength that they're receiving from me has changed on two occasions. What does this tell us? Well, basically the decibel reading counts for very little. If a station can hear you, then they can hear you. And in that instance, they should be able to work you. So what has this limited test shown us? Well, it's shown us that on 500 milliwatts, we're able to be heard in Spain, France, Germany, Austria, Estonia, and several other countries around Europe, all over a thousand miles. Had we decided to run 5 watts, I'm sure that this list would have been far more comprehensive. Had we improved the antenna system as well, we may have even reached even more stations. I think the point I'm trying to make here is, as I previously said, it's not just about the power. It's about the antenna that you've got. It's about the atmospheric conditions. And it's about the other station that's trying to receive you. As radio hams, we've got a number of different ways that we can communicate. And one that really benefits from low power is FT8. FT8 signals are able to go right around the globe quite easily. So if you haven't tried it, why not give it a go? If you've got this far without turning off, then well done. How about thinking about subscribing to my channel and don't forget to hit the bell or even give us a thumbs up. It lets me know that I'm doing something right. So, my name's Keith, my call sign is G0FEA, and I'm the Ham Radio Junkie. I'll catch you next time.